After many months of nothing new to watch, soon Star Trek fans will have the opportunity to witness the final season of one of the most divisive series in its history, that being Star Trek Discovery. But given the recent information that has been released about the show's fifth season, I think there's a very good chance that much like with the third season of Star Trek Picard, many fans will return for the final trek of the USS Discovery. Hi everyone and welcome to What Did I Miss? My name is Eric, thank you very much for joining me today, where I will be going over all the information that has been released so far about the upcoming fifth season of Star Trek Discovery, including when it will air, what the episode titles are, and also take a look at all the promotional materials which I think drop a huge hint at what is going to happen this season. But before I get into all of that, I want to thank you once again for clicking on this video and ask that if you do find yourself enjoying the content, to please hit that like button and also subscribe if you would like future videos like this. I really appreciate the support. First of all, in case you are not aware, this upcoming fifth season will in fact be the last for the crew of the USS Discovery. That does not mean we won't see any of these characters in the future, and I'm going to discuss those possibilities as well in a bit. Originally, this was not scheduled to be the last season of the series when it was first filmed from June to November in 2022. In March of 2023, Paramount announced that Season 5 would be the final season for Discovery and that reshoots would need to be completed to give the series a proper send-off. These reshoots apparently took place the month after the announcement so that they could be completed before the possible actor strike, which did occur. Because filming began a year and a half ago, a few trailers have been released for the season already, which sees the crew chase after a mysterious artifact. Just last week, Paramount announced that the final season would begin airing on April 4th of 2024 and that they would be releasing the first two episodes on that day. An official poster was also released as well as the official episode titles. These titles were leaked a few months ago and in the past I've tried to guess what they mean for the episode but usually it's just a crapshoot. So I'm going to list them here and you can come to your own conclusions. If you do have any good theories though, I would love to hear them in the comments. The first two episodes that will be released on April 4th are titled Red Directive and Under the Twin Moons. Red Directive to me sounds like a very harsh Starfleet protocol similar to the Prime Directive or the Omega Directive from Star Trek Voyager. Under the Twin Moons is a rather interesting title simply because it is also the name of a book of Star Trek short stories that were released in the early 80s. That particular story was about Ahura, so it's very possible that the name is just a coincidence. The rest of the episodes will be released week by week and are named Janal, Face the Strange, Mirrors, Whistlespeak, Eriga, Labyrinths, Lagrange Point, and the finale, which is titled Life Itself. It should also be noted that the finale is directed by Olantunde Osunsanmi, who is also the director of the upcoming Star Trek Section 31 film. If you want to know more about that movie, I did a video about it a few weeks ago and you can check that out after watching this. A couple of those titles do stand out to me though. Mirrors could obviously take us to the Mirror Universe one more time on the Discovery and I believe that next to DS9 that Discovery has spent more time on that side of the looking glass than any other in the Star Trek catalog. Lagrange Point is a term used in Celestial Mechanics which I don't really understand. You want to know about the planets, you have to listen to me right now. Sun, Mercurus, Uranus. Uh, water planets. But from what I could learn from Wikipedia, I believe they are points that affect the orbit of objects in space and help their relative position. I could be way off on that, and if anyone else does have a better explanation, I would love to hear it and will point it out in a future video. There are also at least three new cast members joining the returning cast this season. Calum Keith Rennie is playing another Starfleet captain named Rainer. Eve Harlow is playing one of the two possible villains whose name is Maul and the other is being played by Elias Tofexis. His character, La'ak, seems to have some personal connection to the artifact that everyone is searching for and I could not make out what his alien species is. Mary Weissman has also been added back to the main cast as Tilly after leaving the ship in the prior season. Fan favorite Odette Fair will also be returning as Charles Vance and there are rumors that he along with Mary Weissman will return as their characters in the new series, Starfleet Academy which is currently in development and hoping to begin filming by the end of 2024. Although their involvement has not been made official as of yet, it is known that the new series will take place during the 32nd century where the crew of the USS Discovery currently resides and Tilly did leave the ship to begin working at the newly formed Starfleet Academy. Most of the rest of the main cast is returning, although I did not see any mention of Tignataro, who plays the character Reno, or Ian Alexander, who has played Grey. It would be a shame not to see these two characters in the final season, so hopefully they are late additions to the cast list. As I mentioned, 
Paramount released a good amount of promotional materials last week when they confirmed the first two episodes would air on April 4th, including a synopsis for the season as well as the first episode. The synopsis for the season reads, the fifth and final season will find Captain Burnham and the crew of the USS Discovery uncovering a mystery that will send them on an epic adventure across the galaxy to find an ancient power whose very existence has been deliberately hidden for centuries. Wow, and I thought I wrote run-on sentences. But there are others on the hunt as well, dangerous foes who are desperate to claim the prize for themselves and will stop at nothing to get it. If you have seen the trailer, a puzzle box has been shown, but up until now it has been difficult to make out the markings on it. This must be what the crew is searching for, and the producers for this season have called the story a treasure hunt. The first episode, titled Red Directive, was given the following synopsis. Captain Burnham and the USS Discovery are sent to retrieve a mysterious 800-year-old Romulan vessel until the artifact hidden inside is stolen, leading to an epic chase. Meanwhile, Saru is offered the position of a lifetime and Tilly's efforts to help pull her into a tangled web of secrecy. Now, the interesting part of that to me was that the crew come upon an 800-year-old Romulan vessel. In case you forgot, the crew of the USS Discovery were sent 930 years into the future after the second season of the show. Before they were sent to this time period, they were a few years before where the cast of Star Trek Strange New Worlds currently is. So an 800-year-old ship from their current perspective would mean that this ship is from around the same time as the series Star Trek Picard took place. Now, let's talk about what I've been waiting this whole video to talk about, and that is my theory after seeing the poster for the upcoming season. It is a beautiful poster in which you can see the cast as well as the ship surrounded by what look like repeating hieroglyphics. These are the same characters that appear on the mysterious artifact. When you look at them closer, you can see that there are three unique characters and that one of these characters repeat in a four character sequence. Also, these characters are always grouped together in the same manner with the two unique characters followed by the repeating one. So being a Star Trek fan, I started thinking of important terms, events, or character names from Star Trek's past that begin or end with the same letter that repeats. But I couldn't really come up with anything that would be important enough to bring back on Discovery. So I changed my way of looking at it and instead try to think of anything from Trek's history that begins and ends with the same letter. That is when I had an apostrophe. I know the term is epiphany, I'm making a joke, lighten up. The first name that came to me after looking at these characters like this was K-I-R-K. -K. Yes, that is right. I believe that these hieroglyphics are spelling out the name Kirk as in James T. And really, if you look at the characters themselves, they do resemble the letters that I am assigning to them. Spoilers from the third season of Picard, if you have not seen a show that came out a year ago, but there is a point in the season where the crew come upon the remains of James T. Kirk in a secret Starfleet facility. There was no explanation given as to why they were there, but the important thing to glean from that moment was that James Kirk was not buried on some distant planet and that his body was in the hands of Starfleet. This also opened the door for the character to return from the dead in a future project, and Star Trek has never had a problem bringing a character back from the dead, sometimes multiple times. If Kirk is being brought back for the final season of Discovery, then the next question becomes, which actor is going to play him? First, let's talk about Chris Pine, because I believe that of the three that I'm going to talk about, his return is the least likely. This could change if Paramount announces another release date for the long-delayed Star Trek film, which would be a sequel to 2016's Star Trek Beyond. But even though people still contend that movie is in some state of production, it seems like there would need to be a miracle to actually get that film made. If you would like to know more about what is going on with that film and every other film in production at Star Trek, I also did a video about that subject that you can check out after this. So for these reasons, I do not think it is very likely that Chris Pine will return. Next, there is Paul Wesley, who is currently guest starring on Star Trek Strange New Worlds as a younger version of the character than we have ever seen on screen before. Since the actor is already under contract with the studio as a member of the other cast, his return would probably be the easiest to facilitate. But if the purpose of bringing the character back is to cause buzz around the final season, then just bringing the character back in name only, basically, would not have as much impact. Nothing against the performance of Paul Wesley so far, but I think even he would agree that his appearance as the character does not carry the same gravitas as William Shatner or even Chris Pine. Star Trek Discovery also has a history of not sticking the landing when it comes to season-long mysteries. Cough, cough, the burn, cough, cough. I couldn't even tell you what the big mystery was on Discovery last season because it was so forgettable. Something about 10 people drinking high C, I think. So to promise the return of a character like James Kirk, only to have them be played by an actor whom the audience does not associate with, would be another huge mistake. Then there is William Shatner, who makes the most sense, but also could be an issue. If Paramount wants people to tune in to the last season of Discovery, 
then there is no better way to do it than to include William Shatner. Just look at the final season of Picard, which is the highest rated and most watched of the entire series. Whether you like the plot or not, you cannot argue that the reason for the show's success in the final season was the decision to bring back as many characters from Star Trek The Next Generation as possible. Star Trek Discovery could gain the same amount of viewers that all those returning actors brought in by just hiring William Shatner. Even people that loathe the first two seasons of Picard watched the final season and gleefully cheered it on because those actors were brought back to play the roles that people love. Bringing William Shatner on Discovery would cause even the harshest critics of the series to have to tune in to see him play James Kirk on screen one more time. Now it is true that recently William Shatner has been critical of the new series being produced by Paramount, although he has been very courteous in regard to Paul Wesley and his performance of the character that he made iconic. There is a really good story of them sitting together on a plane after Paul Wesley had been cast as Kirk that you should look up if you have not heard it. The actor's advanced age could also be a factor as he is around 9 years older than Patrick Stewart, but I'm sure that the producers would be accommodating to anything the actor needed, including his schedule. So let me know what do you think we are going to see in the fifth and final season of Star Trek Discovery. Do you have any of your own theories that I did not mention? Would you like to see the return of William Shatner? Let me know in the comments. Well that is all I have for today, but thanks again for watching. Please remember to hit that like button before you go, and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?